what I want to do right now, okay, is before we actually try and predict, like before we actually do our um, lab on different positions, I want you to take a look at this, and I want you to tell me, I'm going to give you the statue, I'll give you some stickers, and I want you to place the stickers on the statue of where you think a decubitus ulcer would form on the body. One, two, three, four, and then the three of you are here. Let me give you the stickers. You guys, these little dot stickers here, I want you to place it on the human, on the statue where you think a decubitus also would form, and then we'll see like how if you guys are correct. Wait, is he in that position in the bed? Um, no, we'll just say he's laying down in bed. But where do you think he would form a basic uh, decubitus ulcer? Here, Now, um, we're going over the chain of infection here, and we're talking about a cold. We talked about how the cold lives in the respiratory tract, and then it goes, uh, portal of exit is the mouth and nose, and the method of transmission is a cough and sneeze. So then when a person sneezes, <laughs> there you go, that's how a sneeze looks like, okay? So a sneeze, you can't see it because it's just flying around with respiratory droplets. And so if we take a look at our patient here, or a person who has just basically possibly gotten sick, method of transmission is a cough and sneeze. All right? So. Portal of entry is what for these two girls here in the front row? What's a portal of entry for them? Mouth Their mouth and nose. Correct. Okay. And then susceptible hosts are the two girls that I just <laughs> sneezed on. Oh, you're not allergic to baby powder, are you? No. Okay, thank God. All right, moving on. <laughs> okay. So I've basically explained like, you know, how a cough and sneeze <laughs> can enter your portal of entry, which would be your mouth and your nose. There's another way that you could actually get that, get a disease this way. It would be through indirect contact. <laughs> <laughs> okay, grab the doorknob. Put it, I'm sorry. Take your hand off the doorknob. Okay, now Ike has powder from the doorknob on his hand. But really, these are microbes, okay, from my cough or sneeze. Now Ike wipes his face. I have to. Yes. <laughs> and now Ike gets sick, okay? And it's because that's through indirect transmission. Now, here's the next note I want you to put down here. This. Okay can be passed on by the following. It's called a fomite. Okay? A fomite is a non-living object that can carry a pathogen and to pass on disease. Like a doorknob. But besides a doorknob, give me an example of something that could happen to a nurse where she could basically like expose herself to, to a virus like HIV or hepatitis B using some type of tool when she's administering a medication. What could she, what could happen? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Say it again. Accidental needle. Oh, say it louder. Accidental needle stick. Yeah, a needle stick. Okay. A needle. You get the palms. Good. And release the fingers. Good. Now the nails. All right, Joe. Water's running. It's okay. Ideally, you want to use like, a clean part of the towel whenever you're drying. So you dry, and then use a clean portion of the towel. Yeah, there you okay. go. That was actually, um, it's glow germ. And so essentially, like, what I did was I put this on your hands, and then you wash your hands. And then if you're still showing the presence of this under a black light, then essentially there wasn't enough friction. Okay? <laughs> so then we're going to have to improve on the way that you wash your hands. Okay? Okay, Joe, we'll take a look. Oh, see? Not enough friction. 
Okay, so we're gonna have to work on that. So essentially when you're in clinical, like we may have to date, like change briefs on patients. We never refer to it as a diaper, you refer to it as an incontinent brief, okay? Because mm -hmm. if you refer to it as a diaper, it's almost kind of like, you're not showing a lot of respect to the patient. You know, you want to refer to it as an incontinent brief. So then, obviously you want to introduce yourself to the patient and let, you know, let them know what's going on. You know, hello Mr. Jones, I'm your CNA. What do we do with the current? We should do what? We should pull the privacy current. And then you would basically wipe this section here. Yep. Now he's ready to give place a new brief. Okay. And then the brief, the tabs open basically in the front. The waistband should be even with the waist, okay? If you don't put the waistband even with the waist, look what happens when you put the brief on. Let's say you put the waistband super low, or we put it super high on the mid-back. If you're not paying attention, well, this is what's gonna happen. You put it super high on the back, you lay the patient out. There's not enough brief, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can't close it. So, you can Okay, now you take your gloves off the way I showed you. Let me see. Good, good, okay. That goes in the garbage, and then we can tuck the patient back in. And then we give them their call light. We can also lower the bed so it's a safe light. Okay, Mr. Jones, let us know if you need anything. And then we can just leave the room, and then what do you do with our hands? Wash. Wash. Wash your hands. Okay.